What we'll talk about this morning is uh, I'll give a brief intro to the uh, AIA's integrated project delivery effort because this is, this is where we found the need for a model progression spec. Um, we're going to talk about some model use cases which um, uh, is mostly uh, taken from a um, development that we did with VICO uh, as um, uh, them acting as consultants to us and then get into the details of the uh, model progression spec. Uh, there are two sides to it, really, the, the level of detail and then the model component author. And we'll um, uh, get into some explanation of that. And then we'll, uh, I'll end with um, a, a list of some resources where you can find more information on this. The um, presentation itself will be quite short. I don't think it'll take more than a half an hour. Um, but uh, it's liable to generate quite a few questions, so we will uh, be here to uh, answer as, as many as we can. So the first piece, uh, integrated project delivery, this was really um, kicked off by the um, Construction Users Roundtable. This is an organization of large facilities or owners. In, uh, 2004, they published this white paper 1202, which became known as the CURT report because of the uh, far-reaching uh, impact that it had on the industry. Well, the, the main conclusion that this uh, uh, report came to, or, or what they saw as the what the, what was needed to be addressed, was that owners regularly experience cost and schedule overruns. Well, this is not really news to most of us, but they had some recommendations uh, on how to address this. And the, the, the report boiled down to four points. One, owner leadership, that the owners should really um, take some leadership in how projects were put together. Two, an integrated project structure, and we'll get into the details of that uh, in a second. Three, open information sharing. Um, projects uh, that were have been done for decades, if not centuries, under the design bid build process, tend to have uh, silos of information where people protect their own the information that they generate. Um, the idea here was that this information all needs to be shared for the good of the project, and specifically, um, Kurt called for the use of virtual building information modeling. So uh, a number of of uh, industry groups responded immediately to this because, as I say, this this paper had some pretty uh, far-reaching impact on the industry. It just it rang true to a lot of us. So um, in February of '05, well, first of all, even prior to that, the AIA wrote a letter to Kurt um, formally accepting the challenge and say, "Yeah, we." Uh, support the conclusions of this report and here's what we're going to do. So in February of, uh, of the next year, um, the AIA developed the Integrated Practice Strategy Working Group and by December of that year adopted Integrated Practice as one of the two strategic initiatives. Integrated Practice then um, morphed into Integrated Project Delivery as a more um, inclusive term since practice seemed to apply only to the design side. So by 2007, the AIA California Council published two editions of the uh, working definition. And then um, the AIA Documents Committee uh, collaborated with the AIA California um, Council to publish the Integrated Project Delivery, a guide. And I'll give you the, um, this is a free uh, uh, publication, and I'll give you the uh, URL for it uh, toward the end in the resources section. Um, then by November, also in November of 07, um, consensus, the, the consensus docs, a, a group of other organizations, industry organizations, published really the first commercially available IPD contracts in their, their uh, series 300. And then by the next May, AIA had published two series of their own um, IPD contracts. So you can see that the, the, this process is becoming a reality uh, quite quickly. Basis of this process is um, what uh, has been tagged the McClamey curve. The idea here is that as a project progresses, the 
ability to impact cost and, and capabilities drops off and the cost of making any changes rises dramatically. And the traditional process has most of the work being done uh, during the construction documents phase. And this is just where the, uh, the ability to impact the cost and function has dropped way off and the cost is starting to go way up. So what integrated project delivery does is move the bulk of the effort upstream so where, to where it's much more cost effective. Um, and in our development of it, we decided to actually rename the phases. Uh, and we had quite a bit of discussion around this, but we decided that really the phases entailed a much different scope of work. So to name the, to keep the old names was really uh, quite confusing. How we accomplish this then, uh, in the traditional um, project delivery process, of course, we have uh, the owner and the architect beginning and then bringing on the engineers and going all the way through construction documents without anybody else's uh, input. The, um, so we're spending a lot of time deciding what we're going to build uh, with no input from, uh, with re really no consideration of how we're going to build it. We do do some consideration of that during construction documents, but really in most contracts, at least in the, in the uh, U.S., the architect and engineers are forbidden to deal with uh, means and methods of the project. So those aren't really considered until the who is going to build the thing gets on board. And so we begin construction here where how we're going to build it hasn't been completely worked out, and there's even what we're going to build. A lot of some of that has been left to the field that we're going to have to figure that out once we start building, and that's where the conflicts and and uh, change orders begin is right there. What integrated project delivery does is begin considering not only what we're going to build, but who's going to build it and how we're going to build right from the very beginning. And we bring on the, the, really the major point of integrated project delivery is to bring on the people who are going to build the thing in the design phase. Um, there is also, and this can, is really uh, quite analogous to uh, one of the lean, uh, the lean construction um, concepts, that there's a more, much more of an emphasis on um, milestones in the design. So what, have, what is happening in detail, the detailed design phase is really much more explicitly defined than what is happening in, in uh, the design development phase under the, under the previous, uh, the traditional work. And same thing as we uh, come to the end of construction. Now the, the point is that we come to the beginning of construction with a fully coordinated set of documents and, and uh, a fully coordinated model. This is where the need for the model progression spec came in. Because we could, it was fine to say that, OK, at, at detailed design, we're going to have a fully coordinated um, model. But really, what exactly was modeled uh, was kind of nebulous. In addition, uh, in a project that uh, we recently did with VICO, um, they identified about seven use cases of the model. Most of us who have been working with um, building information modeling for some time have not reached the point where we can use one specific model uh, or one single model for the entire project. The problem being that, number one, different players work with different platforms, and number two, these models are built for different purposes. The architect, for example, if they are um, developing the model purely to extract 2D documents from them, for example, they will not differentiate between a wall that reaches only to the uh, suspended ceiling and a wall that goes all the way to the structural floor above. Obviously, we need the construction uh, people need that kind of detail uh, in order to be able to, to estimate schedule and uh, construct the building. 